George, and this is... It's Hambone McGuire. What's your new nickname? We're still working on a new gimmick. No, you said you had a new nickname. What was it? I didn't have a I, I was working I on it. I liked it. You're lying now. I, I, I don't remember You're it. You're holding back. I'm not holding back. No, no, no. It wasn't soft and supple. It was... It was, uh, it was, soft it was, and supple. It was... I said nothing about soft cutie and supple. Pie. I was not cutie pie. I am Han, pretty cute. Hambone cutie... No, what's your name? I don't remember. John... Ah! Bright no, eyes? No, it's not bright eyes. Love I have brown eyes. I, I, I'm, I'm lovable, I know, but... I'm here with John Love Muffin McGuire! That's not my new gimmick! Yeah! We are back from another edition of My Tai TV. This is episode number 34. Woo! We are so excited today. This might be our last episode for a little while because I'm having a baby. Yeah, he is. I don't know. But he doesn't might, look like it, we, I know, but he's showing. We might actually do an episode. Here down. We might actually do an episode from the birthing room. I haven't decided yet. We gotta see if Allison agrees to it. She's totally not gonna agree she to it. She so might agree to it. She will not agree to it. Yeah, because we she, got, she's, got... she's texting me right now and she says, I do not agree to it. We're also gonna 360 cam the birth thing. Oh god, George. And we're gonna have Moses right up in there taking real photos. Because oh, everyone needs professional photography in their birthing room. No, I don't agree with any of this. Today we're gonna be talking about Wonder Woman, where we will review it hardcore, intensely review Wonder Woman, what's being called the female superhero movie of the century. Like, for real, y'all. We are going to find out why it's taken Hambone 38 years to see Iron Maiden. It's not really that great of a story. There is no excuse for this. So we'll probably end up talking more about my adventures with Iron Maiden. We're going to be talking about, we're going to review back shavers and the latest in modern back shaving technology. You got a back shaver? We, uh, everybody needs a back shaver. I don't need a back shaver. But I've got specific back shaving tools now. So I don't need it. We'll, we'll talk about it. I don't right. want to hold this off. We're also going to talk about the Justice League versus the Avengers because I honestly need to talk about this because I don't think we've ever talked about this before. All right, then I'm going to lay some ground rules right now. I will take the Justice League because you are not a DC guy. We No, that's bullshit. You're you not, you are not a DC you guy. You take what's going to win. Well, well, I'm going to take you down with the Justice League. I, ah, uh, I will. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, and then we might talk about murder. Probably mine. In the meantime, you're going to make us a cocktail. You're going to make it awesome. You're going to make it quick, and you're going to talk us through this. First, I'll take a sip of yours. Tell me what you think. Damn, that's one good cocktail. So, a few weeks back, George was over the house. He wanted a hurricane. I was out of passion fruit syrup. I had to wing it. I had some less than stellar ingredients. So here they are today. It actually turned into something great. It's called the hammocane. It's Wait, so be is more... this the less than stellar ingredients version? I, I impressed myself. I'm like MacGyver with alcohol, George. Stay with me. So what this is, is a more juice-based drink topped off a little club soda so you can actually enjoy it a little more through the course of the night instead of slamming it back like straight rum, like I've been known to do. So here we already got our cup filled with ice. We're gonna start with some little passion fruit juice, an ounce of passion fruit juice from Goya. Oh, boya. You can't beat them, but you sure can lick them. That was their ad campaign in the 80s for their ice pops. They were terrible. This is a little bit of white grapefruit juice. I'm sorry, forgive me. Ruby red is what I grabbed today. Throw that in there. We're going to throw in a little bit of lime juice as well. So an ounce of each of the juices, half an ounce of the freshly squeezed lime juice. So you clearly make your own lime juice now and store it. Yeah, I do. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I learned it from watching you, George. Sweeten it up just a little bit more. We're going to use the Libra & Co. gum syrup. Yes, we are not endorsed by Libra & Co., but dang it, what I like to be. Here's about a half ounce of that. And then the good stuff comes in. We're going to pop in a little bit of rum. So instead of using light rum, today I went with the coconut rum. Uh, I normally despise coconut. However, it's super delightful in this cocktail. George can attest to it. George, I love it. you drink? I'm a fan. Then show it's them. no replacement of coconut milk or coconut cream. But it's a damn good rum substitute. I went with the coconut rum instead of using the light rum and coconut cream because I'm using a lot more juices today. Did I have any dark rum in my cabinet? You did. It's what I bought for you last time. <laughs> I should have went with my gut. So here we go, folks. We got all our ingredients in so far. We're going to shake it up. Shake it like a Polaroid picture hand bone. Apparently I'm not supposed to do that. Why? What happened? Apparently that like destroys the things. They, what, they're... the picture? No, it does nothing. It actually does nothing. Really? It doesn't do anything to help okay. or promote the photo development, uh, nor does it really do anything other than just like look cool. And then we're going to top it off with this LaCroix Pamplemousse, which is grapefruit, but it's more fun to say Pamplemousse. Uh, and this is delicious. I am really high on this drink, so high on it, I named it after myself, the Hammocane. John some... Love Muffin McGuire. It's not my new gimmick. 
This is good. It kind of tastes like a poor man's uh, Mai Tai with a little bit of a hurricane. I, I think it's a great refreshing drink. Awesome for sitting on the patio on a hot summer night. There you go. Hopefully we get one soon. It's been nothing but rain here. So we're not sponsored by Lieberco. We should be. Or any of the boxes we unbox, but we do have our very first sponsor. We got a sponsor? We have a sponsor. Really? Oh shit. We are officially sponsored by the Squatty Potty. Oh, for real? We are sponsored by Squatty Potty. That is It awesome. looks like there is a room for a new... Uh, uh, we're, We're not going to behead anybody, folks. Yeah, there was there was an opening. We dove in. We dove right dove in. in. We squatted in. We just we squatted. We squatted. Muscles going. And uh, they uh, sent over uh, this fantastic new squatty potty. This is their uh, I don't you know. You should what have size. one in every room of your house. That's about. So I want you to talk to us a little bit about your experience with the squatty potty, since you are the first human that I know that vocally admitted that they own a squatty potty, also known as the squatte pate. So first and foremost, Mike Mistake was the first one to own it, but he never really talked about it. I'm an early adopter when it comes to fun things like the squatty potty. I was having some problems with my guts, and instead of changing my diet like I should have done, like an adult would have, I went to the squatty potty to help me kind of move things along and it did a fantastic job of it i am much more comfortable and everything kind of goes the way it's supposed to go a lot easier i find that when you sit down and you poop it just all comes out in one one fell swoop and you could sit there for five more minutes yeah. nothing else will come out this is the squatty potty it helped me with my yoga you tremendously can, you, you see how i squat now you can learn more about it squattepate.com squattepate.com use the offer code uh squattepate.com Front slash my tie to get something off of this. This is the squatty potty. It is ham bone recommended. You will poop better. George approved. <laughs> Get a sponsor. How cool is that? So let us talk. Now we got the uh, shit out of the way. Literally. Let's talk about Wonder Woman. Uh, I loved it. You loved it. I fucking loved it. I thought the first two thirds of the movie was well done. I thought the Acting was great, yes, but I cannot recommend it. Why can't you recommend it, George? I am so you taught me uh, when we were discussing how Logan was going to be that the one thing you hate more in movies is the I'm going in for an attack, camera freezes, 360 around the person, slow mo into fast mode attack. So two things, I still hate that. First off, I want to back it off on Logan. Uh, what we saw in the trailer ended up looking a lot better in the finished product. So. Good job, team. But I'm referring to the Age of Apocalypse Syndrome, uh, which is everything against CG. Right. No real world engagement at all. So I get that. I'm with that completely. That being said, one of the things that I've learned and I, I kind of expect now from DC movies is that's how they shoot fight scenes. Like every DC movie that you've seen so far has that kind of dumb. Over stylized. Over stylized. 360, like time stop. I would have preferred. Personally, seeing a little more traditional action. That being said, I was so pleased as punch with Wonder Woman overall. I kind of just sat there, and when it first happened, I was like, ah, oh, fuck. But then I watched it a little more, and I just got comfortable with it, and I enjoyed it. So real talk. I have a feeling everybody is glowing over this movie, or the people were glowing over it. It's because, A, it's the first DC movie that doesn't completely suck. So DC fans are like, oh, we have a movie now. It's the best one since The Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. Then there are women who, the, unlike my wife, traditionally don't go see comic book movies. They're like, hey, we got our superhero. It's happening. It is happening. It's happening. We love it too. And then there are the, uh, the uh, I don't know, like people who were like just super psyched that Wonder Woman actually got made because it took 10 years and 50 writers to actually do it. I, look, I love the acting. I loved the, um... I love the the whole opening segment. It's just my problem is when I stop to think, is when my brain right. starts to hurt. Right. Things like they're in an Amazonian Amazonian world where no one else exists. Time stopped for them. It's all women. How do they have babies? So, didn't read too much into that because didn't care. Uh, it just it, maybe it's because I'm it's, having a baby. It's it's because you're having a baby. I would say I would say definitely. And then what if the baby's a boy? Mind. What if the baby's a boy? Well, all right. you just. So, in some fantasy worlds, if the baby is the boy, they just get put into uh, slavery and or used to procreate with the women. Like, the, like you know, down in uh, Menzel Brands and uh, in the Underdark, the women are the warriors. The women are the, the, the they're essentially Underdark Amazonians. That being said, uh, 
I know there's a reason and how they explain it, and it's in the comics, and I just kind of, when you mentioned it to me, you called me about midnight that night, and I kind of forgot about it to this moment, so I don't have an answer as to how the Amazonians reproduce. That being said, uh, the idea of Themyscira being kind of away from the world was a very, uh, very old idea from the very beginning of Wonder Woman and early origins. Also, what I thought was cool was, you know what? When they came up with the idea that she came to our world to, to be a force for change and for good and for peace. Um, you know, they didn't account when they wrote those early stories about how a great war would affect it. So, yeah, Steve Trevor's plane went down, and that's how they acted. Okay, spoilers. There's going to be a shit ton of spoilers right now, folks. If you haven't seen Wonder Woman yet, I will do the courtesy of telling you to turn off the broadcast until you do. There's nothing to spoil. It there's really is. You know, there's, there's nothing to spoil. Look, you know what? If I, if I was really psyched to see this movie, and then I watched one of my favorite programs, My Thai TV, and they revealed what I was going to see before I seen it, I would be pissed, too. Okay, go. So... The idea, you know, the idea of a plane going down and accidentally finding this place, because essentially Themyscira is located in a, a similar thing to a Bermuda Triangle, it makes sense. It makes total sense. And how when the other boat went in there to try to find him, they kind of breached the barrier because it's in an area where, you know, up until that point, there, you know, up to that point, there wasn't any radar. There wasn't, you know, sonar. There wasn't things where people would be able to find this place in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the ocean, an island that wasn't supposed to be there. So that made total sense to me. Uh, I really like the way that they portray the Amazons, that Wonder Woman is a very special Amazon. She's different than the other Amazons. The, other, the Amazons were all yes, super tough. We, we get that. That we get. Like, I get it. Because she's got superhuman strengths from the beginning. The rest of them all just... They don't die. That would be spoiling. They live. I'm not going to talk anymore. Yeah. Look, so, you know, the Germans come in. They pop the diaphragm. They get to the other side of right. where the Bermuda Triangle is. They get them... Look, I get it. It's awesome. Um, the ending, I thought uh, they were building up to this Ares being this amazing character. I thought Ares was kind of weak at the end. There is this like big reveal, and it's not really that great. I, it's 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 it, it, okay. So here's the thing: it's not the greatest reveal, but it's not a terrible reveal. It's not like a Shyamalan fail. I mean, it's 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 kind of oh exactly my God, if you watch the, the movie. The dude from Fargo is the bag is really Ares. So I don't know. Cool. But I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's I think it the bothered thing. me more that he point. didn't transform into anything. It's really just the guy from Fargo. He did transform. Well, I mean, he uh, yeah. it's essentially in the comic, Ares is just, you can't even see his face. It's just giant armor with like fire eyes. So they got the character right. It was some of the best, some of the best costuming on both sides, on the villain side and on the hero side that I've seen in a very long time. So I, I don't think the reveal was uh, crappy enough to be warranting the amount of hate that you have I'm not for. hate. I didn't say it was bad. You called me at midnight be like, hey, I just don't understand this. I was aggressive. This is terrible. And it happened. This was the I worst twist terrible. ever. No, that, yes. This that was M. Night Shalom How Lama could you Ding say Dong this was bad. great? I can't trust that your was, opinion that, anymore. It was what it was. That was the phone call. I was that was it. Mexico, Cali, and, and you know what? Sometimes you just have to go there. I um I look I enjoyed I, oh my god and when she started put on she put on the the uh uh what's her name from uh from the uh throwback shield uh who was the girl who had her own TV show for two Peggy seasons Peggy Carter oh when she put on the Peggy Carter outfit and the fact that she's playing the Thor character which is like I'm dumb and naive about the world but she was I mean essentially I if, know, if you but if, it's if, the if same. you if you really look at the Little Mermaid. And Ariel being like, what the, what the fuck is a fork? And then Wonder Woman, they actually did things that were straight out of the comic where Wonder Woman comes to the world and she has an ice cream cone for the first time. And it's like, oh my God, this is the great, you should, congratulations on your work. It's so good. Like she's a baby for the first, like this is things that, you know, a character is kind of naive about that. She's been trained and bred to be a warrior. They never told her about cutlery or ice cream. They don't have ice cream on Themyscira. Then it really would be Paradise Island. So let's cut to the chase. What's your, what's your rating? I would say definitely go see it. I would give it like, Three and a half stars. Out of what? Five. Five. Everyone well, raises out of five. I go into percentages. I'm like, I, I give it like an. an you're, you're, I give you're, it like you're, a, you're a I give guy. it an eighty-two. Yeah. Well, eighty-two is a good grade. It's like a B minus. I would say still holding strong for me is the best superhero movie ever, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier is one of the best ever. Winter Soldier is one of the best ever. I think this is a fantastic movie. I think you all should definitely go see it. And you know what, man? It was nice. In my theater, there was tons of girls, young and old, dressed as Wonder Woman, amped, psyched about it. People were happy. Fuck it. It's good. I, you know what I thought was even better than Wonder Woman? The preview for Thor beforehand. Okay, real talk. Thor, Ragnarok, 
might dethrone Winter Soldier as the greatest comic book movie ever made. It, it, I love the 80s stuff. By the way, I just want to let you know that I have decided what your superhuman power is. What is it? Hugging? You're, no, you get the ice hammer. Ice hammer! Ice hammer. Only you can wield it. Only you can wield it. All you really can do is crush ice to make drinks. Folks, this is not meant to crush ice. However, I use it to crush ice because there's nothing grosser than taking a bag of ice and slamming it on the ground where your dogs, cats, children, and your feet have been. So, if you make cocktails at home, treat yourself. About $9.99 at any supermarket, ice hammer. And if anyone breaks into your house, you just take it and go ah! to town on their knees. Exactly. So, next conversation. Uh, one of the things that us Greeks, oh, by the way, the best thing about Wonder Woman is like the greatest like Greek story ever. Cause and I, thought I didn't know been, Amazonians were Greek. That was right, I thought it'd be right over the plate for you, George. Right over the plate. Your people. But even more important for Greeks, back shavers. So I, uh, I, I, I kickstart a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. A you? painful amount of stuff. No. I have to go with stuff that's like low risk, high return. Yeah. That's the type of like BS that my job will like say in marketing, but... Uh, I recently kickstarted the Backblade 2.0. This is a weapon. This is my superhuman weapon. So one of the curses that I've had in my life is that I, I, I have back hair. You have it's back not, hair. It's, it's you know, and, but I keep I've been it. Been with you. I've I, seen it. I keep it tidy. I keep it trim. I, I have up till now. I've had the greatest back shaving tool ever, Allison. <laughs> but you know, she doesn't always have time to deal with my back. So I invested in the Backblade. 2.0 system. Let's shave your arm. Let me shave my arm. Let's shave your. Oh, look how easy. Look oh, at all that shave hair. The fucking look, arm. <laughs> look at that. Let's <laughs> see your eyebrows no. again. No. This is like so. This is supposed to work dry or wet. You basically just reach behind. It just worked pretty good dry. Shaving. Look, look, no, look, no, no, no more. Oh my god, look I'm, at the amount of hair I'm that came off. Come all on, the man. hair that came off a hair bone. Holy crap. This is incredible. You can barely see your wow, that so this No, is, you can look at this patchy. And we're not sponsored by Backblade either. But I we just want to know be. for you, you hairy mongoloids out there like me, this is actually I've yet to actually use it yet. Let's get some of that ham bone hair out of there. Um, it's got this suction cup. It hangs on your wall. Nice. I don't know what you stick over here. Uh, a few that's extra, probably for your regular razor. A couple extra blades. But yeah, you just reach and no, pull. Thing. Put your regular razor in there so you can hang them both up. Your regular so razor and your back razor. I am, I'm, I'm a big fan of this bit. So all you hairy men out there, even if you just have like wings or something, I, I'm going to give it a shot this weekend. It looks like there's nothing. It's grippy. It's powerful. So smooth. I don't know how much your blades are. The blades are huge. Dude, whoa, whoa. Come on, you don't need cyber eyebrows. Bro, eyebrows. I will super. Come kick on, you this is the first time you've sneakers. lost your eyebrows. No, it's not the first time I lost my eyebrows. What do you use to shave your back? Nothing. Can you grow a beard? No. Is that something you've been cursed with all your life? I got great hair up here, so I don't got so great hair down here. Is that because your are you pointing to your pubes? What would you just show pointing to? I'm pointing my face. Ah, ah. So. Talk about comic books? Yes. Justice League versus Avengers. Let's do this. Why do you believe Justice League? I believe it's the Avengers. You go first. Hulk smash. Okay. Hulk smash. Thor is a god. Wonder Woman's a god. She's a goddess, and she's kind of like not even aware that she's a goddess. And it's like, Thor is a god, and he has a hammer. Superman. Sup Thor, hammer. It's okay. So Superman is only vulnerable, only vulnerable to two things, kryptonite and magic. So what if they put some kryptonite on the hammer? Oh, that he'd be F sideways. However, you have a heavy hitter in Superman. You've got a heavy hitter in Wonder Woman. You've got a heavy hitter in Shazam. You've got Batman, who is Batman. You got Batman does nothing. Batman does He's everything. like Daredevil. At least Daredevil has powers. Batman's a master tactician. Batman will stop the battle before it starts. You also, I mean, I mean, how deep you want, how deep in the roster do you want to go, man? I could go all day. Of all the members of the Justice League, right off the bat, you've got two gods and a Superman. You've got Batman. You've got Cyborg to take care of all the technological things. You've got Wonder Woman, who's the king of the sea, who's super, super strong as well. You've got, I mean, if you want to go really, really deep with it, you've got Green Lantern, who's got a ring that can make and do anything. You've got Green Arrow to take out Hawkeye. Okay, let's stop right there. Green Arrow takes out Hawk Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Batman versus Iron Man. I think Iron Man takes out Batman. Batman Batman's just all day. rich. Iron Man takes out Batman. Batman is rich enough to know what he's getting himself into. Batman one EMP, Iron Man goes down. Superman taken out by a combo of Thor and Hulk. Like right there. But then we're not even talking about Wolverine. We're not even talking about Havoc, who can just go nuclear on everybody. We're not even talking about Spider-Man, who like... Firestorm, the nuclear man. Oh, 
Wanda, the Scarlet Witch, she just blanks you out of existence. Bye, Superman. Well played. Like, she pretty much destroyed every option. Like, I win. So, here's the thing. I have Zatanna, uh, who is fantastic with magic. That Zartan's said, sister does not count not for as sister. well as she's Marvel. Uh, the thing is, I will give you Wanda Maximoff a more powerful witch than Zatanna. Because you are absolutely right. She said no more mutants and all the mutants Wink. lost their power. She blinked people out of existence. So I will say, with the exception of Wanda Maximoff, I could make a case for the Avengers whooping up on the just I mean, the Just League whooping up on the Avengers and then you got you just swept a leg. But I won. Ladies and gentlemen, he just swept a leg and won. I just swept the leg. So there we go. We have it. Avengers <laughs> true winners. God so tomorrow, ah, what are you doing so tomorrow? Good. I'm going to see Iron Maiden, everybody. And this is your first Iron Maiden show. Very first Iron Maiden show. I gotta Maiden say, show. I am completely baffled at the amount of legendary bands you have not seen in your lifetime. Well, but I've seen I've seen some other legendary bands that you might not automatically assume. But you have not seen Iron Maiden. So here's the thing: Iron Maiden always came around. I was either on tour or working because the days I wasn't working, I was gonna be on tour. So a lot of times when they came through, I either was busy, about to be busy, or probably just couldn't afford to go. So that's why it's taken me 38 years to see Iron Maiden. I have seen Iron Maiden on every tour since Seven Sun, and I've not missed one. And I never had a ton of money, but I would always make it a point to try to see Iron Maiden. It also helps have friends whose parents will take you to things. Iron Maiden is probably my second favorite band. Yeah. And I have stuck with them through thick and thin. Yeah, so, I didn't do that. So, what, are you expecting to enjoy yourself? <laughs> I'm fucking Expect your mind to be blown and I'm bone. expecting it to be one of the greatest concert experiences I've ever had in my life. So nice, I'm going to do it twice. I'm going to do it once with George Colazzo and once with George Bungalow. So, we are... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick a timeline that some people do not love as much. Mm -hmm. The Blaze Bailey era. Oh. For those that do not know, Blaze Bailey was the... Third replacement singer of Iron Maiden. Second replacement singer of Iron Maiden. I thought he was the second. Uh, if you count, yeah. So if you don't... He was the third singer of Iron Maiden. The third singer. See, all right. So maybe controversial. I don't really see it as Bruce Dickinson replacing... Bruce Dickinson is a replacement singer. He's a replacement singer, but it's just... It's different. They were pretty big when he replaced them. <sighs> So I, I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's as big of a say a Brian Johnson Bon Scott situation. So I saw Iron Maiden three times with Blaze Bailey. Right. X Factor, Future Real, and some Greatest Hits tour. And I interviewed Dave Murray, the guitar player, right. uh, at the Roseland Ballroom uh, during the uh, X Factor tour, where I got to see Ronnie James Dio. Nice. At the Roseland. That's one I wish I got to see. Um, my other favorite show with them, though, uh, well, actually, it was the return of Bruce Dickinson at the Hammerstein Ballroom. That had to be amazing. But just recently, this is my shit I love that's cool this week. Uh, Iron Maiden has started releasing their older album, their older, mid, their, their 90s, 2000 albums. Nice. Starting off with The X Factor. Oh, wow. And Future Real. So, a, a funny thing about Future Is that a double album? The, yeah, it's a double album. They're all double albums. Iron Man has lots of records. Nice. So Future Real uh, came out in 1998, I believe. I could be wrong. Uh, I was at Sam Goody. Right. Allison was working with me. And the BMG representative came in and said, would you two like to go to Iron Man's record release party? And I was like, of course I do. So I took Allison, freshly new, fallen in love, willing to do anything for me, went to see Iron Maiden. But it wasn't just any Iron Maiden release party. It was at Laser Storm in New York City. What's Laser Storm? Laser Storm is like laser tag. Oh. But generic. So they stra we go there, they make you put on this outfit, and they throw you in this room with other Iron Maiden fans while Iron Maiden is in the booth doing play-by-play -play and playing Future Reel over the PA while, while you're, you're killing each tag. other. Yes, they weren't in the room. Um, but, <laughs> and, and, and that's what we did. And it was like the most insane thing ever. And, and we were just commando rolling. It's like laser, I don't know if anybody said laser tag is old, but basically it's like paintball without the pain or the die. Yeah. Uh, at the end of it, I actually won a full size blinking light up poster, 3D poster of this album cover <laughs> signed by all the band members. Nice. A few months later, 
Blaze Bailey leaves the band. Bruce Dickinson and and uh, and uh, the other guy who I'm blanking on, Adrian Smith, rejoined the band, and I'm left the poster that's missing the most like everybody but Steve Harris I care about on that. Do you think that Bruce Dickinson likes laser tag? Bruce Dickinson probably would be in there with us yeah. playing laser tag. So that's my experience with Iron Maiden and laser tag and Future Real. There's actually uh, I also just got this today from England. Oh shit. I uh, special ordered this. I had to import this, uh, and it comes with No Prayer for the Dying and Fear of the Dark, and an empty box. The rest of it's empty, so I can fill it up with all my '90s Iron Maiden albums and 2000s. Oh, so it's a dummy. It's a dummy box. Of yes, <laughs> with two records. Very cool. So that's my cool shit. I love this. Now, week. do you have the rest of these records on vinyl? I have none of those. Oh, I have the new album, yeah, the and, and, I, and I have uh, Flight Six Six Six. But like, there's records like um, records like uh, a matter of life and death. That I don't think it ever came out in the states. Nobody yeah. even knows that album exists. Like nobody realizes that between Dance of Death and Final Frontier, there was an album called A Matter of Life and Death. That you're gonna be paying a pr pretty penny for that. What do you mean? I already pre-ordered all of them. <laughs> pre-ordered all of these. Holy shit! Amazon.com, UK. You can get anything. Yeah. So I'm so psyched. There's a lot of records here. I'm gonna be. But they come out slowly. They come out in July, June, July, August. So it's not like I got to pay a big chunk. It's like that's a, a pretty that's a pretty cool uh, sweet box. Yeah, Brave New World, my favorite new album by favorite them. Album? What cool shit do you love this week, Hambone? What cool shit do I love this week? I love that I'm going to see Iron Maiden this week, um, and that's pretty much encompassing. You my entire never world. remember this segment. I do remember this segment. You don't. You never let me. Never let me finish. Can I shave your arms? You no. You cannot shave my arms you anymore. You want me to match the other arm with no, that it's, arm? It's fine. I was like, I was like standing like this all night. Uh, cool shit. I love this week. I'm going to see Iron Maiden. I'm also going to go see my buddy's band open for a Sam I Am uh, on Friday night as well. Uh, I am also very excited because it's my best friend Jen Cisco's birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday, dude! Love your face. I'm excited. You are so psyched right now. Pretty How nice. can they get a hold of you, Hambone? Ah, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Hambreaker. I might actually tweet this week. Well, um, you can find me at unwinnable.com where I have my other podcast, which is Eye of the Beer Holder. We drink, we talk about Dungeons and Dragons. It's a good old time. You can reach me at glkcreativeinstagram.com. You can reach me at glkcreative on Twitter. You can find me on cultofgeorgia.com where I write about all this stuff when I have a chance. If I break, you can find old episodes of My Thai TV on uh, mytaitv.com. You need to rate, review, subscribe to this show on iTunes so we can continue to get great sponsors like Squatty Potty. Wow. Squattypotty.com. Wow. Never forget. Never, Never forget. forget. Also, I gotta say, stick around, folks. Stay tuned for our birth episode. Birth of Legend, My Thai TV episode 36. In That'll the be 35. Room. Isn't this, this 35? This is 34. This is 35? I think this is 34. I think it's 34. Better Birth 34. of Legend! Yeah! Take us out. Folks, hello. Теребиты, поломаны крылья, Серой болью всю душу свело, Кокаина, серебряная,